Good evening, candidates, voters, and patrons. Since the Collinsville Library was founded in 1915, 100 years ago this year, it has been, yeah. <laughs> It has been our goal to help educate patrons and help them educate themselves. Tonight, it is our goal to help educate you about the candidates running for the upcoming elections for city council, school board, and mayor. Each candidate will have the opportunity to give a one minute opening statement and then be able to answer questions that were prepared by our committee. Replies to these questions can last up to one minute each. Audience members, you were also invited to submit questions they have been weeded through, and some of them will be used tonight. While we do want this evening to be informative and educational, we also want it to be somewhat fun and entertaining. So after the serious questions in each round, we're going to have a handful of rapid response questions for the candidates, which candidates will be able to answer in just a few words. Following the rapid response round, we will allow each candidate to give a closing statement, which can be up to two minutes long. To help you all stay on track and to guarantee that we're not here until midnight, we will have a uh, volunteer with a timer in the front row and she'll hold up a sign letting you each know when you have 15 seconds left for your replies and when to stop. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. We are beginning tonight with our candidates for city council. As stated before, we will begin with an opening statement from each candidate. Cheryl Brombolich, as you are in seat one, we will begin with you. Awesome. I start. Alphabetical order, the library. <laughs> Should have known. Uh, we will begin with you, and then we'll work our way down the row. You have one minute. Thank you. Good evening. I want to thank everyone uh, that put this forum together for their commitment in educating the voters of Collinsville. I feel privileged to be here. I'm a lifelong resident of Collinsville. I'm married, I have two daughters, and one very handsome grandson. I'm a Cayhawk. I graduated from Council High School in 1980, and my oldest daughter, Courtney, graduated in 2006, and I have a younger daughter, Katie, who is a junior now at CHS. I'm the co-president of the Cayhawk Basketball Booster Club, and I'm also a member of the Softball Booster Club. I worked for the city and served its residents for 31 years, and I truly care about what happens in Collinsville. I believe in a sense of community, and I would work to foster an environment with increased communication between the city and its residents, and partnerships between the city and other taxing bodies such as Unit 10 and CARD. If elected to the council, I would focus on efficiency in city government. I've worked with every city department, and I know how they operate, so I would work to make them as cost-effective as possible. I ask for your vote on April 7th. Thank you, and I've got a stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. Dorman? Yeah, my name's Rob Dorman. I'm disappointed we have a flag behind us and we didn't stand up and say Pledge of Allegiance. I go to a lot of city council meetings and watch them in almost all the school board meetings. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. If you would like to leave. Sure. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I'm big on education. Most people know me about because of that. I grew up in Collinsville, Collinsville High School uh, graduate. I have an MBA and I'm an IT manager professionally. But I got involved in the local community because of education, because that's what brings people to communities is good schools. And my son was uh, in kindergarten, was ready to start kindergarten, and we didn't have an enrollment program to allow kids with late birthdays in. So I petitioned the school board and started going to meetings, and they agreed. And we came up with a, with a new early enrollment program for kids. Didn't cost taxpayers anything, and it helped families out. So there was a, an opening uh, in 2012, and I decided to run. So I ran. My name's Rob Dorman. My phone number is 618-344-3375. That 3375 is desk, and it's a, like a help desk. So for a help desk or for a desk, that's how you get hold of me. I only got one minute. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks to the Chamber of Commerce and the Library for putting this on tonight. It's an excellent opportunity for the residents to learn more about the campus. I'm seeking a seat in the City Council to serve the community I grew up in by helping to maintain and plan for a strong and vibrant council for the years to come. I'm a third generation lifelong resident of Collinsville and come from a family with a rich history of community volunteering and public service and wish to continue that tradition. 
I've owned and operated a business in council, have worked as a council police officer for a short period of time, have served on numerous boards and commissions for Collinsville. I'm currently working as a supervisor in a community development department to a neighboring community. As a con city council member, I would like to use those life experiences to assist in the positive growth of council. First, I would like to thank the people of Collinsville for the opportunity to serve on the council these last two years. It's, it's been an honor. You know, I've talked to people that believe that speaking out and voting in city elections is futile, that the important issues are handled by the federal government. But our forefathers created a system where government starts with the individual and moves to the community long before it ever reaches Washington, D.C. <coughs> Here in the city where you live is your best chance to influence the decisions that are made. The best chance to require an account of what's been done. And quite literally, your best chance to change the future. I keep this in mind when it comes time for the council to decide how to spend your money. And that's your money. And that's one reason why I believe you should re-elect Karen Woolard. First question uh, for tonight is, if you could change or fix one thing about the city of Collinsville tomorrow, what would it be? And Mr. Dorman, we'll start with you for this one. If I could fix or change one thing about the city of Collinsville, it would probably be the way we administer TIFs. I believe that TIFs are, are overused. They should be for a very short term, I have a very robust business plan, and be used as a last resort. Uh, they take money away from Schools traditionally that would go to schools, they benefit businesses more than, than the residents. Collinsville has had 1.4% growth since 2000, which is, uh, is something. I mean, we should have, have, like the communities around us, Maryville, Wolf Island, Edwardsville have all prospered, but Collinsville has an, the equivalent of 27 people a year have moved here in the past 13 years. And I think one of the reasons why is because well, that's good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have 11. Okay. Well, again, my name's Rob Gordon. Please vote for me. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Stanley? Yes, I think there should be increased focus on um, residential and commercial development, um, more on the planning side uh, to develop more residential developments, bring more commercial development into the community, and I think that focus um, can be increased compared to what we're doing now. Thank you. Ms. Wolbert? Yeah, it's going to be hard to say one thing, but I will limit it to one. Uh, right now, there is a real focus, I think, from the people that they would like to have a more interactive council meeting. And I can't see how that would not benefit every citizen, so I'd have to say that's my one thing. Thank you. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> Don't want to leave yet. <laughs> um, I'm not sure it's a change. I think what we would need to do is increase our communication with our residents. I, I go back to that sense of community. I think people want to be involved and they want to be informed. I think we need to reach out to our residents, find out what services they want from us. Um, I do believe that, I, I think of Collinsville, I think of Cahawk Pride. I think there needs to be a lot more of a um, sense of community in Collinsville. Thank you. Next question is, in addition to Collinsville's great location, what other amenities would you promote to attract businesses and families to move to Collinsville? And this starts with Mr. Stanley. I think it begins, it begins with planning. It begins with planning uh, and setting up a, a platform in Collinsville where there's the confidence to invest in our community. And um, we are in a perfect location. We see development improvements in communities on either side of us and without as a member of the Planning Commission um, we did a lot of planning in, in the past we laid out best areas for subdivisions we talked about how we better develop Eastport Plaza and I think that focus needs to be there we increase the economic um, we do a better job with an economic um, the economic development it'll increase our tax base and lessen the tax burden on the community. So uh, the growth is not what it should be in this community. Thank you. Well, obviously the library. <laughs> um, I think the library is an awesome thing that we offer our citizens and uh, the vocational 
uh, department at our school is uh, unique, I believe. And um, I think Collinsville has some great people and some great pastors. Oh, I believe our history is something that we should promote, but I agree with Mr. Stamen on planning. I believe we need to have a, a good strategic plan for the future of Collinsville. It's very important for us to plant our seeds now for the future of our town. We have children and grandchildren. We need to make sure that the needs we have now are addressed, but also what's addressed in the future. Uh, planning does that. We do need to bring businesses into town to help our growth. We also you know, need to make sure that our residents are taken care of. But businesses, when you bring businesses to town, that's economic development that brings in tax money that lessens the money on the property taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boone. I can speak to this because oh, hello. I can speak to this because I have people move here for work, and they never ever moved to Collinsville, and it disappoints me. Some of the school board members know that because I spoke to them about it. Uh, what we should be promoting, though, is that we have the lowest tax levy of anybody around us, and it hasn't gone up in seven years. So that's that's good for the, the current council. They do that, and also we have really good infrastructure. That's some of the stuff that needs to be promoted, and it's a safe safe place. That's one of the reasons why people move to communities for low taxes. A good safe infrastructure and, uh, and good schools and if we can fix the schools which don't need a lot of fixing but just uh, do the best we can to have uh, have the best schools in the area which we're working on it then more people move here thank you sir the next question is do you believe there is money being wasted in our local government if yes please tell us where you think this waste is coming from and it answers you this one I do believe that there, I, am I here? I'm, okay, it doesn't sound like it, I'm on. So I do believe that there is government waste. I think there's always government waste. I don't think the government can help it. Um, I do believe that the uh, parking lot that we paid for, about $600,000, while we need a parking lot, paying $70,000 more than the building was um, estimated in value is an attitude of, we want what we want and we're going to get it no matter the cost and i think that the government has to stop thinking like that i think that the uh, intersection at almost a half a million dollars was also a waste because i had someone who knew the specs and uh, really knew the business and they said we could have done it for half the price so i definitely think there's waste thank you Ms. bromwich i agree that there's always going to be waste in any government local state or federal but in talking about efficiency earlier, my point was that I do believe we could research our services and how we conduct them and find the co most cost-effective way to do that. I don't know that I can pinpoint anything in particular, but I do think that there's always room for improvement. There's always a chance for continuous improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't believe in offering up problems without solutions, but you're asking me what I think is wasteful. I don't think the city of Collinsville or any community actually should try and maintain a historical piece of property. There's better, better groups and organizations that can do that, and the Collins House is a perfect example. The city has that on, on their agenda, and it's an item that we have to pay for. You look at the Wildy Theater in Edwardsville, that was taken care of by private interest groups, and we should do the same thing with the Collins House. That's a perfect example right there. Thank you. I'm not familiar with any large areas of waste. I do agree that there is always a chance to look at things, but not being a current council member would be hard for me to make that, and I don't want to make an accusation of that without knowing. But I do think this council has done an excellent job of steering us through the toughest years that city government has um, saw in the last probably 30, 40 years. And I think they have been frugal in their efforts to keep costs down so but I do think there's areas too that they can look at to improve but um, I, I would like to compliment them on doing a good job in those years thank you all the next question is where do you see the city of Collinsville 25 years from now in 2040 and what steps can the city take today to help us get there well, that's a great question. Seeing into the future is, is always hard. It's hard to see four or five years from now, but definitely 25 <coughs> years from now would be difficult. I believe that's why we need to have a strategic plan in place. We need something that's going to lay out the future of Collinsville. We need a capital improvement plan that's going to set out our projects for the next 5, 10, 15 years. Um, what steps the city can take, I think, is, is taking an active role in planning our future. Uh, a strategic plan would do just that. 
uh, like I said before, we have to plan now for what's going to happen within this year, within the next five years, within the next ten years, and in future future generations. So I believe a good strategic plan could accomplish that. Thank you, Mr. Thorne. Well, I'd like to see down there in the in the floodplains develop the businesses. Um, you have them out there in St. Peter's and Wentzville. There's enough land down there. Part of it's in the city limits. Maybe we can add export. Um, if a, not through eminent domain, but if the owners are willing to sell it at a reasonable price. But that's really what it's going to take is, uh, is something down there like where the Walmart is in that area. And like an Ikea that they're building in St. Louis. Something like that and attracting a business like that down here. And we need that because that will, that will lower taxes for the people that live here. And it will also give people reasons to come here and shop and spend money. Thank you. Mr. Stamen? Yes, I don't sound like a broken record, but there again, the economic development plan, uh, a comprehensive plan, uh, the planning commission should be, it always is working on, keeping it updated. And, and we should know where we're going to be in four years. We should know our population projections. We should know our roads and sewers, where we need to be in four years. And we need to plan for that now. Uh, you look at the communities around us that are developing, they can tell you where they're going in four years. And but it's done through, a lot of people don't want to, spend the money, but it's done through traffic studies, it's done through um, studies of your infrastructure, your water and your sewer systems, and it costs money to do those studies, but that's the only way to plan for the future and figure out where this community is going to go. Thank you. Ms. I believe we need to focus on the basics, and I, I, I said that in my statement for the, for the literature here tonight. Um, Government was intended to deal with certain things and was not intended to deal with other things, and it's laid out pretty clearly in our founding documents. And if the government would stick to what it was supposed to do and the community pulled together, and I think we have that in Collinsville, we have a good community that pulls together, uh, I think we can go places. I think that uh, we could increase safety by focusing on what the community, the government's supposed to do instead of being broadly spread out and concerned with things that aren't necessarily government business. Thank you all. The next question is, if elected, would you vote yes or no to create a funding mechanism, such as a TIF district, a business district, or both, for the improvement of the St. Louis Road and Collinsville Road areas? And it begins with Mr. Dorman. Um, no, because it's not blighted in my opinion. Um, blighted means blighted, and it's not blighted, and I live off St. Louis Road, and uh, and I think uh, you'd make it a TIF district, and you'd have one business, which is already going and uh, spending a lot of money on it, Nick, who owns the Savon Liquor, spoke to me about it yesterday. He doesn't get any TIF money, and he's a half a block or a block from the whole lounge. And it's a shame, but for me, though, who shops there, it costs me more money to spend money uh, in his business, so I'd vote no for it. A TIF district is a last resort. It should be. A very last resort in my opinion. The area should be truly blighted and it should be an economic engine when you put it in there. If you want a good example of a TIF district that's work, working, look at the one in Shiloh. They built a Deerbergs out there. They went in with a well engineered design, they put it in place, it was short term, like five years, and now you have all that business there. And if it's something like that, possibly. Thank you. Mr. Stamen? Yes, I would have to do further, um, have further information to it, but I, I do support an effective district, district if, it's, um, if it's planned correctly and it's used correctly. Um, it, it's a stimulus to bring areas that are not going anywhere, and, and I too live off St. Louis Road, and um, there can be a lot more done on St. Louis Road than just what's being done now, and I think it's, it's one of our commercial corridors. I think it's an important area to focus on. And if a business district, uh, a special taxing district, or TIF can be used as an effective way to do it, um, then I would support it. Thank you. Ms. Wood? I would not support it. I do not believe that the government is the best custodian of your money. And to create a TIF increases everyone's taxes. <coughs> And so I would not support that. I do believe that there are things we could do for the citizens of this uh, community that would benefit them as individuals and as businesses that don't require them to the district. Thank you. And Ms. Bromberg? Yes, I would support a funding mechanism to economic, un economically develop that part of town. Um, I travel that all the time, and I do believe a business district or something of that sort where the monies that are paid into the district would help to develop that area is something that we could use. 
Um, I believe when you're talking about a custodian of a government being custodian of your money, I, I do think at the local level, it's important that we decide what happens here, <clears throat> that we don't let the state determine what happens here. I do think that we need to invest back into our own town. Thank you all. The next question is, some would argue that current city codes are not being enforced in terms of property appearance. If elected, would you vote yes or no to establishing an occupancy permit program if it were presented to you? And it begins with Mr. Salmon. Yes, I think anyone who knows me, and I, I presented my 15 years in the Planning Commission, we presented a proposal for a property maintenance program um, to the City Council, I think four different times in the 15 years I was on, so I would definitely have to say I'd support that. Thank you. I would not support that. I believe that if there's a law in the book, that's the city's responsibility to make sure it's followed. And so we've already got the mechanism in place. Let's make it happen. Thank you. Ms. Bromwich? I think with uh, some research into that, I, I feel that people would support that program. I would support it as well. I do believe that we need to maintain our neighborhoods. It, it benefits the entire, the entire city. We have a city code enforcement officer now. Um, she only works four days a week. She works four 10-hour days. Maybe changing that to four, uh, five, eight-hour days would make a difference. Like Mrs. Willard said, there is a law in the book. We should just enforce what we have. Thank you all. What is your opinion on health and safety ordinance? The lack of, are you pro or con? And it begins with Ms. I think every community has to have some kind of health and safety ordinance. I would hate to see um, a huge uh, push before research is done, and I'd like to see what other communities are doing and the results of that. And Ms. Robledge? I understand that to mean the same as the last prepared question that you just answered. The health and safety ordinance is the same, basically the same as the property maintenance ordinance. Um, and I've already stated my opinion, I would be for that. Thank you. I don't know if there's a problem yet. I would have to know more. Um, I don't want to pass laws just to pass laws and also uh, have to have them enforced just to have them enforced without any knowledge of it. I don't really know. Health and safety uh, is important. Most people are healthy, trying to be healthy. Most people try and be safe, but I don't know enough about it with just the name of it to be able to have an opinion. Thank you. Um, the health and safety. Um, ordinance was floated out, like Cheryl said, um, as a another name for a property maintenance program. It, you know, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck, and that's what that's what it is. And uh, I would ask the people to drive around the community and look. Um, I would ask them to talk to some police officers and see some of the places they go into, <laughs> talk to the firemen, and see some of the things they see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if you don't think there's a need for it, uh, I play ask ask around, look around, and see what see what we can do to make the community better. And when we look at how we're developing, why people move to a community. Um, ask yourself the question: Is that what we need to do in this community to make it better? Are we satisfied with the way it is? Thank you. <clears throat> the next question is: Do you plan on reinstating limb pickup? And it begins with Cheryl Bromwich. It started with me last time, but I'll go right ahead. That's <laughs> fine. this one like. okay. yep, Sorry. Um, I knew that question would come up tonight. That's always a hot topic with the city. I do think there is a way that we could research that and, and see about instituting some form of limb pickup for the residents, whether it's in the same way we did it before or if there's a, a better way to do it. Um, Again, I think communicating with the residents lets us find out what services they want. It also lets us find out what services they're happy with. Uh, everybody wants a different type of service. The seniors want the shovel bus. They want their continued garbage rate. But everyone has different services that they'd like to see us do, and I think reaching out to the community and talking to them, we'd be able to find that information out. Yes, I think we should do that. That's one of the, the qualities of life that you get whenever you live in a good community. I think uh, we have the equipment, we have the personnel, we should do it. If, uh, we have to pay a little bit more, so be it. That's one of the reasons people live here, that's one of the things they want. It's obvious. Thank you. 
I believe that was one of the um, tough decisions the council had to make um, when the economy tanked and uh, they, they voted to get rid of it. It was a luxury, I think. Uh, a lot of communities had already not done it, and it was it was a very good service we offered. But I believe, like Cheryl mentioned, it's a it's something that the citizens would have to decide. Do you want to pay that extra money to do it? It does. It will put additional strain on the departments that would handle that. So um, it's great to have it if the city can afford to do it. Thank you. And Ms. Wood? I know that it was uh, one of the reasons it was discontinued in the first place was because the number of citizens actually using the services didn't seem to justify the cost. So rather than you know make everybody pay for a service that not everyone is going to use, I'd like to see something, a deal worked with the trash company because I had to deal with them personally about some issues that I needed picked up and, uh, and have them have a, a, some kind of a really viable program that is not having to pay for three months of service when you want one set of bags picked up. So. <laughs> Thank you all. And the last uh, serious question that we have for the city council candidates is, what are your feelings regarding the tragic events that occurred in Ferguson, Missouri, and what is the one thing you would have done differently? And it begins with Mr. Dorman. What I would have done differently is I would have had uh, all my officers wearing hoodies out on the street, walking around with them with spray paint. So whenever somebody torched a car, they were tagged with spray paint so they could be arrested and thrown in jail. Um, it was horrifying to watch on TV. I have a seven-year-old kid, and it was on every night. We normally don't watch TV, but he, he would uh, come in and, and, and it'd be on, and it's a shame. I hope that we never have anything like that here. I think we have a very good, strong police department. I think uh, we lead probably the region, and I know we're accredited, so I don't think we'll ever have that here. And I pray to God that we don't. Thank you. I believe that's a challenge for every community now. It, it, every, we, every night we see something on TV about it, but it boils down to having a, a good relationship, our police department having a good relationship with the community, being tied to the community, and I think what we saw there, they, they were separate. Uh, the same ideals for the community it probably wasn't being enforced by the department, so that goes to um, good cooperation between the citizens, the city council, and those departments, not only the police department, but every department in the city. When you lose touch of that, when the department kind of goes out on its own and operates, um, you lose that control and, and there's no good can come out of that. Thank you. The problem in Ferguson started a long time before the shooting of Michael Brown. And whether you believe there was systemic racism or not, it still is evidence that there was not a good communication between the people and the government. And that if there are abuses, they have to be addressed. And so definitely a re review going on constantly of how the police are dealing with the citizens, of how the government is dealing with the citizens. Get a communication, a dialogue. We've been talking about that the last three weeks in, in city council meetings, that we need a dialogue with the people. Thank you. Ms. Bromwich? I agree. I think communication, the image of the government over there, the image of the police department, is something that could have been changed or maybe uh, helped with communication with the residents. Community policing is very important. To have our policemen out on the street talking to our residents, interacting with them. I don't know that I could give an example of what I would change because I'm, I don't claim to be a policeman or anyone that could, could do that, but I do believe communication is a big issue in, in, in the image that the city portrayed over there. All right, thank you all. And now we have the fun rapid response round, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, these are just uh, one or two word answers and just you know a few, few minutes. The first question is, to Mr. Stamen, and it's crudas or glazy squares? <laughs> crudas. I'm sorry, glazy squares. Crudas. A rift already? <laughs> Probably. Oh, uh, crudas for Easter bread, glazy square for uh, donuts. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next one is uptown or downtown. <laughs> and that begins with Ms. Wood. Downtown. <laughs> From which? Uptown. It's always been downtown to me. Downtown. All right, 
the next one starts with the uh, Brown Bridge, and it is Fozzie's or Caracillo's. Oh, that's way different. Fozzie's for their great salads, Caracillo's for the enchiladas, yeah. <laughs> Fozzie's. Caracillo's. I'm sorry, as a foodie, you cannot make me make that choice. <laughs> <laughs> Won't do it. All right. Italian festival or horseradish festival? Oh. <laughs> and it starts with Mr. Gorman. Uh, horseradish festival. Italian festival. Man, my nephew was horseradish king, but um, I'm going to say Italian festival because of the charity. And Ms. Bromley? I'm Italian. Got to go Italian festival. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the last rapid response uh, round question that we have, because we're a library, what is the last book that you've read? And it starts with Mr. Stain. Um, uh, 41. I am reading uh, The Purpose Driven Life. Ms. Bromwich? I'm reading Unbroken. Uh, Zelda Twilight Princess Guidebook with my kid. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, on that note, <laughs> that wraps up our city council segment. <laughs> and thank you all for participating and enjoy your great answer. I do apologize. I forgot to put that in my script. The uh, closing, uh, you have up to two minutes for a closing. And the last question started with Mr. Stamen, so that would start with Ms. Ward. Uh, I apologize if I've been a little too philosophical tonight, but I can't help it. That's just kind of who I am. Uh, when it comes to the people of Collinsville, I have one grave concern. I am seriously troubled by the ever-increasing tax burden in this country. I have read that the average U.S. citizen pays approximately 50% of his income in some form of tax, government fee, or licensing. From every side, you hear the threat of increased taxes. Sometimes I want to shout, we only have 100%. If today we only get to live on 50%, what does the future hold if taxes increase? Can you live on 45% of your income or 40% of your income? The madness has to stop, and we must find ways of planning for our future that resolve these issues. Otherwise, the same financial tragedy that plagues our state will one day plague our city. I raised two daughters on my own, and I can tell you from personal experience, making the hard decisions that allowed us to have a bright future were not fun at the time, but they were worth it. I believe as a community we will say the same things if we plan wisely today for a brighter tomorrow. And I challenge everyone who is running for office to commit to reviewing the current plans of the city in order to make it so. Thank you. Ms. Bromwich? I just wanted to say that I think Collinsville is a great city. I think we have a lot of great residents. I dealt with them for many years uh, while working for the city. I think we do need to plan for our future. We do need a strategic plan that will help us continuously improve. And what I mean by that is that we need to work hard every day to make sure that things are better for our community and for our residents, for our children, our grandchildren. We have a, lot, we have a low crime rate here in Collinsville. I believe it's safe. I, I think that most of the residents feel that way. We have an awesome public safety department, our firemen, our policemen. We have committed workers in every department that work every day to try to make sure that Collinsville is a better place. I talked a little earlier about communication, and when I was city clerk, I started some programs that um, improved the city's transparency. I started the council agenda packets on the website, the meetings, uh, the videos, the minutes. I think that we can expand on that. I think that we need to talk to our residents, find out what they're thinking. I really think that the residents care about how the city operates, and um, I do believe in partnerships with other taxing districts. With Unit 10, I'm involved with my daughter's sports at the high school and her academic career there. And um, Unit 10, the school district, is very important to bringing residents to our town. Uh, new businesses can bring residents in as well, but I think we need to remain a bedroom community that is primed for business location. Um, like I said earlier, we need to plant the seeds for the future of our town. We need to use whatever means are available to us to encourage people to not only move here if they're planning a move, or, but to stay here. I hope my grandson stays here and raises his family here. I also believe in providing quality services to our residents. I believe that they need 
they need to be top quality services and I don't believe in cutting services down to a lower level just to save a penny. And thank you and I appreciate your vote on April 7th. Thank you. Uh, I grew up in Collinsville. I've lived here pretty much my entire life. It's wonderful to live so close to St. Louis. I can be downtown in 15 minutes going to a ball game. A lot of people that I work with move to the region and they just take a glance at Collinsville. I want to change that. I think we have a great location. There's a lot of good people live here. And we have the lowest taxes around and we need to keep them that way. One of the things you're voting for out of these candidates here is somebody to represent you and help you run your town. You need to think of your town as a business and these people as the board of directors and with Scott Williams as, as the general manager running it. I have a background in business. I have an MBA. My company is on a, about a $40 million a year account and that's about what the city is here. I want to bring that experience and leverage it and help the city prosper. I have a little kid and I plan on being here and letting him grow up and hopefully he'll be able to have a kid and a family here too. Collinsville is a wonderful place. I wouldn't be running if it wasn't. I care about the place. But I also care about my money and I don't like seeing it blown uh, or spent, you know, unless it absolutely has to be. And if it's your money too, and you need to, if you're on the city council, if you don't elect me, whoever you do elect needs to stop and think every time they vote if it's really going to benefit the city and what the, what, what the, the end line and the bottom is going to be down the road, the return on the investment, because that's what you guys are doing, is you're paying somebody to represent you to invest in, in your town where your home is and your, your assets are. So I'm Rob Dorman. Please vote for me, and thank you all for coming. The fact that you came here tonight makes a big difference. You'll go back and tell people about what's going on. People that may not even vote normally might, because you'll tell them that you, you met somebody here, you saw somebody, and they inspired you to get out and vote, then maybe you might even run next time. That's the reason I'm running. I'm not a politician. I'm a father. I had a little kid, and, uh, and I wanted to make the town he lives in better. So thank you all for coming, and please vote for me, Rob Dorman. And my phone number, again, is 4 desk 344 D-E-S-K. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gold. Now, I'm going to focus on my qualifications um, to better, better acquaint you with me. Um, I am a lifelong resident of Collinsville with deep roots in the community and have the need to serve and give back to the community. And the history that I have as a former business owner, 35 years in Collinsville, I'm familiar with the challenges that local businesses face on a day-to-day -day basis and what it takes to run a business in a community and how the city can partner with those businesses with uh, strong business, business retention programs. Um, my short time as a police officer, I'm familiar through training experience what it takes to have our police department not fall into the uh, what happened in Ferguson. Not that the con we need to have a good communication between the council and the residents uh, and the police department to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, my other experience through, uh, when I, I was in the Air Force as a firefighter, I have a good understanding of the challenges that our uh, first responders and fire department face on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they need to be provided with excellent equipment, uh, modern equipment to do the job they need to do. Uh, we need to maintain a high level of emergency services that we currently have, and, and that would be a top priority. As a planning commission member, I spent 15 years in the planning commission, three years as a chairman. Um, the importance of future planning, uh, obviously, so to answer some of my questions, I put a tremendous amount of importance to that, and that is the future of our community. Uh, and we have a lot of volunteer boards in the historic preservation, economic development, the council needs to listen to those groups. Those are some very dedicated people that serve the community, and we need to do that. Um, and uh, finally, on my, uh, I work for the City of O'Fallon and the Community Development Department as a supervisor, and I've been there for 20 years, and it's, it's given me an excellent opportunity to take some of what I've learned and bring it to Collinsville. Thank you all, and now that concludes our City Council segment. Thank you all for the round of applause for them.